Kid Cool was released for the NES in North America in 1990, two years after its Japanese release. You play as Kid Cool, who I'm assuming is this dude on the front cover clad in the leather jacket and sunglasses. Looks like a pretty tough customer. So who the hell is this chubby fuck in the white overalls and brown shirt? I know Mega Man looks much different on the cover art, but at least he looked better in the game. At any rate, Kid Cool is on a quest to find seven magical herbs to nurse the dying king back to health. The king has three days to live, and you'll be timed. Each hour that passes by makes up a day. So you have three hours or the king will croak. An interesting feature is the day to night transitions that take place in coordinates with the time. As you've probably figured out by now, this game is a side-scrolling platform, borrowing quite a bit from Super Mario Bros. For example, you'll travel through seven worlds divided into three sub-levels each, making a grand total of 21 stages altogether. You'll wander around, jumping on enemies, most of which you'll need to land on twice, once to put them into the ground, and once more to finish them off. Otherwise, they pop back up. But it's much easier if you have this little red furry fuck named Wiki to use as a projectile. He acts as a boomerang. After you fire him off, you'll have to wait briefly for his return before you can fire again. He also acts as an insurance policy. Normally, it's a one-hit death, but if you get hit with him in your hand, you'll lose him, but you'll be allowed to continue. One thing that sucks though is that once you die, you won't get Wiki back, at least not until you beat the level, cause each level starts off with him popping up near the start and you have to grab him each time. The controls are like using lube, they're stiff and slippery. You start off slow as molasses and then all of a sudden he's blazing at 100 miles an hour, way too fast to see what's in front of you and even if you do, you probably won't be able to stop yourself in time. Like I said, just like using lube. And in most side scrollers, if you jump, you can control your momentum in midair to give yourself more distance. But in this game, if you're moving slow or standing still, you'll hardly be able to move yourself horizontally while you're in the air. So you're probably going to find yourself falling into a lot of pits by misjudging the shitty jumping controls. Another annoyance is when you move from one screen to another vertically. The screen will freeze for like an eternity before it finally shifts. This can be especially irritating if you're on a high platform right below the edge of the screen and you jump up and come right back down again. It wastes so much time. Or check out this example of jumping on an enemy, bouncing off him, and coming back down to land on him again. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Since when is making simple jumps such a big goddamn project? There's nothing special about the graphics or music either, although I do like a couple of the songs, and particularly the Last World's music, but it's still produced rather cheaply. It sounds like whoever played the notes was using only one finger on the keyboard rather than playing actual chords. The enemies are lame all throughout. These little globs are basically this game's version of the Goombas. Then there are these things, and these flying bugs, and you know what? These enemies are so bland that there's no need to name them off, not to mention the fact that I don't know their official names, and they're tough to describe most of the time anyway, that you're gonna find me calling them shit like this guy or this thing, and shit like that all throughout the walkthrough. So if that gets to sounding stupid, I apologize in advance. The game over screen is pretty freaking amusing. Kid Cool apologizes for dying, and the king gives him one more chance, which brings up the option to continue. I know it sounds like Dragon Warrior, but whatever, at least they're not taking this plot too seriously. You can collect some power-ups like money bags which will grant you one spin each on the game's bonus round that takes place between levels. It's like press your luck where you have to stop the light on the right square, where you can get extra lives, but almost all of them lead you to jack shit. You can also find items that add or subtract a minute from your timer, or a stopwatch that freezes it. Obviously you don't want to add a minute to your timer, but really there's no need to bust your balls finishing this game as fast as possible. Besides, you might even want to see the king die. At the beginning of the stage, be sure to stop and grab Wiki. You're going to want to use him as much as possible. After this small water pit, this little bastard will come soaring down from his hang glider or some shit. Your best bet is to run onto him. If you try to jump and attack or jump over one of the other guys, you'll probably get tagged. Oh, and this is probably a good time to explain these water pits. If you run across the water, you'll actually skip across, but you have to press B to jump back up onto land, otherwise you'll just sink. The timing isn't the easiest, but you do get used to it. So use your three bounces to get past this water pit, and then try to get a long jump in over here to get over these platforms, as it'll be easier than climbing up all these individually up the bottom as you race to the finish line. 
The second stage starts out with three of these little schmucks and then a water pit to bounce across. These little pricks with wings won't die if you jump on them. You'll just keep bouncing. So you'll either want to hit them with wiki or run away. You'll come to this bridge that'll collapse under your feet, so you're going to want to move fast, kill these guys along the way, or jump over them. But you're going to want to keep your momentum going so you can jump and at least try to land on this chunk of land over here. After that is another big lake to skip across, a couple decent sized jumps, and you've made it to the end. At the beginning of stage 3, you'll come across this flimsy swinging pole thing. It acts as a slingshot. The higher up you land on it, the further distance you can travel. No need to worry about going far yet, but there'll be another one later. Take the lower path here and skip across the water jumping over all this shit. When jumping over this water, you'll want to get a big jump, but not too far or you'll hit this guy. Your ideal landing spot is here. There'll be another lake to bounce across here with a pole waiting for you in the middle. If you skip across three times, you'll land short and end up not having enough momentum to swing across the next pit. But if you skip twice, you'll get up high enough to swing by. You'll get to another collapsing bridge. Jump over all these pricks while running at full speed. Then you'll come to another lake. Bounce across three times and when you land on the collapsing bridge, keep running straight because these guys will jump right over you. And then you'll arrive at the boss, which is this big red furry guy that looks like a large version of your partner in crime. Throw this partner in crime at him, which won't do anything to hurt him, but it will freeze him. The way to defeat him is to jump on this pump thing at the end of the screen. Jumping onto him won't hurt you either. The only way you can die is if he plows into you head on. It's pathetically easy. You just land on the pump and use him as a springboard back to the pump and repeat the process. You'll finish him off, collect a pot leaf, and head on to world 2. First thing you'll notice about the next stage are these jars that blow air out. They're a fucking pain in the ass. I mean, they can give you a boost in certain spots, but in general, they just make it frustrating to get by, as if it's not hard enough already. After getting past these two jars lined up side by side, you're going to want to make sure you get enough of a head of steam jumping off these platforms. Then after climbing this shit, take a long jump to skip ahead a bit. Drop down here, kill these three guys and take two skips across this lake. Make a jump just as you cross this air jar thing and you'll get a boost to the finish line. At the beginning of the second stage is this prick floating in a cloud that fires lightning down and follows you around kinda like a lack of two in Super Mario Brothers. Fire at him to knock him off, otherwise you'll have to jump on him like three times. When you climb up here, stay on the upper path, carefully jumping across these cloud platforms to get through faster. Just be careful on the way down, you don't want to land in any water. When you get to this platform, jump up here and cross these small platforms and take the biggest leap you can to bypass some of the level, and then do the same thing again here. Now this part sucks because you're going to be bouncing into a field of narrow platforms, so the risk of landing in the water is pretty great. The trick is stopping yourself in the right place, this one here. If you can, kill this guy from over here, otherwise use the air jug as a launching pad onto him. Easier said than done though. Soon after, you'll cross over to the third stage. Start out by going up this way to get a simple shortcut. When you get up here, make a running jump across both sets of narrow platforms, killing the little schmucks on the way. And when you jump off the second line, don't go too far, you don't want to land in the water. After skipping across this lake here, sneak down into this hidden area. It's easier to get by this shit than everything above ground. Getting by this shit isn't so much dangerous as much as it is a miserable experience. These things could teach Monica Lewinsky how to blow. There's nothing really technical about this, just stick to it and eventually you'll manage to get through it. Take a running jump here and catapult yourself as far as you can and you'll arrive at the boss, this piece of shit robot. Just like the last boss, all this guy does is jump around, except he's taller and the spring mechanism you have to jump on is attached to his neck. So jumping on his head is the idea here, and you don't want to grab the timer power up that you'll inevitably cross before you get here. Just don't get careless and you'll finish him off without a problem. It's amazing how the bosses of this game are pieces of cake, and the levels themselves are frustrating as hell. After you take him down, you'll get a shroom. Does anyone else see a pattern here? And now it's on to the third world. This one takes place underground, and the level designers decided that it'd be a good idea to keep these fucking air jugs going in this set of levels too. So many times you'll find these little areas where these damn things will push you back and make advancing through the level a pain in the ass. You really have to time your jump through it so it won't keep you from moving. There'll be a lot of these spring things too. If you press the A button while you bounce, you'll get some more height, but it could hurt you if you hit the ceiling and fall down a pit, so be careful. Head up this way if you have wiki handy and take out some of these punks easily to get through a little faster. When you fall down here into this section of springs, bounce off the one on the end and make sure you get enough height so you can direct yourself into the gap, if you can reach. If you don't reach, you won't have enough time to get back. Watch your head over here, this power up can send you to your death, so try to arc your way over it. The home stretch is a bitch, 
you have to bounce off the spring and use the B button after you jump to give yourself just enough momentum to get over without overshooting. At the beginning of the second stage, you're going to want to wait for the jug to stop momentarily so you can get past it and take this upper path as it's much less dangerous than the bottom. There's a water pit down here, so stay to the right side and then skip across the water, carefully positioning yourself on the springs. When you get into this gap, you'll be bouncing from ceiling to floor, so make sure you're on your way up when you shift yourself back out. Then skip across the water, watch for where the springs are, and you'll be home free.